describe this uh, alumni weekend experience? Uh, it's it's been great. You know, I was I was talking to a few people earlier. Um, you know, I think for both sides, the Rangers and the Islanders. But uh, in hockey, reputation's everything, and um, you know that sort of transcends from generations. And, and a good reputation goes a long way. And I know that uh, the tremendous job that our ownership does, the reputation is strong. And you never know when that's going to help you out, whether it's uh, this season or down the road or a prospect you're drafting or a free agent. You never know how that all plays into it. And uh, once an Islander, always an Islander. That's the motto. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be an alumni, and uh, and I'm excited for today. This is going to be fun. What did that ovation last night from the fans when they were introduced in the 2010 guys mean to you? It, it means everything, really. We saw everyone that was in attendance. And uh, I, I'm lucky in the sense that I've got interaction with the fans all the time. Uh, being on site so often, um, it, that was special. I was more excited for the Josh Bailey ovation and, and the Johnny Boychuk, and uh, you know our, our fans have a long memory. And even though guys, it's just been a couple years, uh, whether it was guys from 70s, 80s, it doesn't matter. You know that uh, that New York Islanders fans don't remember, or sorry, they don't forget, and they always pay. When you look back in your Islanders career, what's the moment that stands out to you? Um, moments, it's tough. You know, I, I think once you're done, you think about it as a whole, and. Uh, I know it's a cliche, but every guy will tell you it's the people you meet along the way, uh, not just the, the people that you work with, but the guys that you sort of grow up with. And, uh, you know, for me and for a lot of the guys, you know, you turn in from, from a young person into an adult and you get to do it around a certain amount of people. And uh, that stands out to me probably more than, than anything that happened on the ice. As I someone who played in the uh, rivalry, uh, the Islander Rangers, regular season games, the fact that they're first going to meet each other for the first time in February. What would you tell the NHL schedule makers, you know, with the balanced schedule and the fact that, you know, they don't play each other hardly anymore? Yeah, I'd say a way to build the anticipation. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be something else. And look, I, I wish it was spread out, but uh, I I can't even fathom how difficult it is to come up with a schedule. It'd be great if it was, uh, you know, opening night, New Year's Day final game of the season and one more other time in between, but I'm just happy that they're playing four times this year instead of three like last year. And what yeah. was it playing in those games? Was there a difference in a regular season game when you played against the Rangers? Without question. Uh, no doubt you got up for it more, um, you know, especially at the old Coliseum or whether it's UBS or whether it's, uh, you know, at the Garden, it, it doesn't really matter. There's an extra special feeling and uh, more than just the two points that are at stake, there's, there's bragging rights and, uh, you know, even a couple of years we we didn't have great seasons and if you beat the Rangers you'd come back and, and get a few pats on the back and smiles and, and a free meal here or there so it, it matters a lot. With how intense the rivalry is and the fact that there are still some younger alumni now this year playing it, do you almost have to hold back a little bit and be like okay we don't need to go full speed, we don't need to try to slam someone into the boards to be all for charity? Yeah I'm a big proponent for slow speed today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't skated since uh, since my career ended so Slow speed would be fine with me, but you know it's it's hockey and it's in the nature, guys. And I think if uh, if it's a tight game with about five minutes to go, I think you'll see the the pace pick up. But no doubt we're we're out here for a cause, and that's uh, you know pooling everything we get together and giving it to a good cause. So um, you know results come second. At the same time, it's Rangers Islanders, so uh, you want you want to win. How special was this? The overtime goal against Florida in the playoffs, because there were so many different layers that went on through that game that night with the video review and all that, and you wind up winning the game the whole time. Yeah, you know, to, to Stefan's question, that, you know, for a moment for me, uh, hockey-wise, that's right up there for me. And, you know, at the time, it was the Barclays Center. It was the first playoff win that, that we had as a, as a franchise there, and um, a moment that, that I'll never forget. And, you know, sometimes I, I see it and I get goosebumps, I get chills, and uh, just, you know, a, a whirlwind of, Emotion. I remember the next day. It's like you're, uh, you, you still feel out of your body, and uh, you get so many pats in the head, and the adrenaline rush, like a headache that that went on and on. And uh, that's the best time of hockey. Uh, sorry, best time of year to ever play hockey. It's playoff time, um, and you know, just just happy to contribute to moments. And that was our first series win in, in a really long time, so it was overdue, and that's something I'll never forget. You're in between the benches. Um, how loud is Patrick Waugh? He's loud. He's really loud. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Like, hey, my co-host Shannon would, would tell you I've got terrible hearing, mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm wearing a headset, um, so you know I, I can see the see the intensity more than I can hear. But no question, he's uh, he's certainly involved. From uh, from your vantage point, it's only been four games, but how do you, how are the how do you think the team is adjusting to him? I, I think it's been impressive. 
you know, I think you listen to, to him for what he sees to like, and he's talking about progression that they're making. Um, but it's the intensity that they're playing with in, in a determined group. And look, it's, it's professional hockey. You'd expect that, that that's the bare minimum, but reality is it's a long season, and you got to push the right buttons. And I think for this group uh, to have someone to push them to that next level, I don't think you, you ever want to get to that point. But in my opinion, it, it looks like it's making a difference right now because uh, that determination and the speed that they're playing with, it's, it's leading to changing the metrics uh, that they've come out with earlier on in the season that weren't very good. It's leading to more shots and less shots against, um, you know, and I think it's going to be a work in progress. Is yeah. there any guys this weekend that maybe you've interacted with for the first time just as, you know, being part of the alumni weekend here or anything like that? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, you know, Pierre Turgeon's one of them. I, I got to speak to him um, while I was working, but, but not in person, really. Uh, and obviously, he's a Hall of Famer now, and I think that's, uh, that's special and uh, just the way he carries himself, so classy and uh, he, he's had time for everyone, so I think an example for all of us as alumni that uh, it doesn't matter how big you get, you give back and, and make yourself available. So that's one of them. And, and look, last year I, I wasn't able to go. I was working, and uh, for me it was really my, my first kick out at to uh, get to see all these faces that you grew up watching or, or guys that you know. And, um, you know, I think instantly a little bit of uh, camaraderie is created when uh, – you know that you shared something together. Thomas, do you have a favorite moment aside from the overtime goal as an Islander? Is there another highlight, personal highlight? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess looking back, um, you know, I think that series win, we, when we hadn't done it in a long time, that moment of the puck went in and that, that was the most accomplished I think I've ever felt. But, you know, there's little moments along the way. I think for me, the one thing that stands out, I'd, I had a rough go and I didn't know if I was going to get an opportunity to play hockey again. And above all, goals, you know, I, I didn't touch a, a game rink for well over a year and I didn't really get to practice with anyone. I did a lot of work on my own to prepare myself for that moment and, and waited well over a year and I, and I seized that opportunity and that's, you know, the proudest I've ever been. Uh, you know, my, my brother had passed and there was a lot of thinking, a lot of time away from a team, away from hockey and that moment, uh, that game itself uh, just lined up, everything went well and, and that's the most proud of myself that I've ever been. So this, so this is crappy timing to follow up with what you just said, but I think you were on the team when they made the decision to go from Jack to, to Dougie. What, when, this, when it changes me, what, what, what is the feeling like in the room? Is it shock? Is it uh, excitement? I think you get every feeling that you could imagine. And, you know, let's be honest, any coach, I'm not talking specifically to what's happened in my career or in the future. You're going to have guys that are excited because maybe it's a new lease on uh, on their careers or an opportunity that, that they think that they should be getting. So you're going to have excitement in the group. Um, and look, once again, I can't speak for everyone. There's going to be massive disappointment. And uh, I, I think you're, you're going to experience all those, especially when, when Jack got let go. Look, he's, uh, it, it, was, it was a little bit of grind for me to make the NHL, and I got someone that appreciated uh, not just the way I played, but the way that I competed and worked, and, and that stood out to me. So I'm forever grateful to him. And then you know, knowing that he's on his way out, uh, you feel like, what, what could I have done uh, to keep him around? Because, you know, he, he helped me get in, and I think every player and every team has a mix of all those emotions. You How much fun are you having on the broadcast? I love it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a lucky guy to step into something that, that I love doing, and I'd be watching hockey and talking about hockey um, with my friends or with anyone who would listen if, if I wasn't in this position. And uh, Our group at MSG, really, like, um, I'm so lucky to work with Shannon, Brendan, and Butch, and the people behind the scenes, and to be able to, to get in the broadcast at home games and, and do color, have someone as gracious as Butch that's so good at his job and has been doing it for so long to say, what are you seeing? Uh, it means a lot to me. You mentioned that you enjoyed getting to speak to Pierre. And to piggyback on the media side, did you like put your media hat on and maybe ask him, pick his brain about what it was like being a teammate of Patrick Roy? And, and get some insight on that end? Yeah, actually, Shannon, Shannon Hogan had a great interview with him between the first and second periods last night and, and asked some of those questions like that, especially re relating to Patrick Waugh and, and their friendship. So uh, I, I was a keen listener on that. And really, there's, there's not too much time at, the, at these events, so uh, you know, hopefully I'll get to spend some more time. But I think just, just being on the ice room will be enough for me. Thomas, there could be very much familiar faces on the other side of the ice when you died today. What's your thoughts on the fact that, you know, if there's going to be some flashbacks, you know, going back to when you were playing versus now where you're just like 
damn, you know, I tried playing against these guys then, now we have this outcome, you know, do you want to try to change the outcome on any of that now? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess so. I think, uh, you know, for a lot of the guys, there'd be people I haven't played against, or, uh, and, and there'd be a handful of guys that I did. So uh, I think if everyone uh, if everyone is better than their peers that they played against, you've got a good chance of winning. So I, I guess I'll be sizing up the younger guys and maybe trying to, trying to keep up to pace, and maybe who, everyone will do that. Who's the ranger for you guys today? Uh, you know what, sneakily, Radek Martinez skates more than anyone, and <laughs> I was trying to get back into the league or think about going overseas, and I was skating with him, and uh, I think that's when I realized I didn't have it, because he, he <laughs> looked like he was better than me at that moment. Uh, Mark Strait, you know, my first captain in the NHL, uh, I, I think he could honestly play the whole game and look good and fresh the entire time, and uh, you know, the rest of us will, will band together and figure it out. <laughs>